welcome back. So before I share with you this incredible place and my adventures on my rest day, I need to bring you up to speed with what happened since the last video because we left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. In the last video, I turned around and made my way down and I went a different route to the way I hiked. In fact, I looped around, went down a beautiful valley towards Gimmelwald. The hike was absolutely gorgeous and I was really happy that I went down and around a different way. It took about three and a half hours and just incredible scenes the whole way. The only problem was that that distant thunderstorm that we talked about just before the avalanche in the previous video, that did catch up with me and it created a huge hailstorm which I managed to capture a little bit of. Hailstones! It's quite nice actually. It's like a little massage. Let's hope they don't get any bigger. <laughs> then it kind of subsided and it just drizzled and it was cold and the storm kind of passed which was nice and I made my way down to Gimmelwald where I rested for about an hour, had a cheeky ginger beer with ice and then I had to begin the arduous, dull and stressful journey all the way around from Gimmelwald down in the cable car to the Lauterbrunnen Valley. Because it was bank holiday Sunday, it was packed and I had to wait for a bus and jumped on a bus and headed back down the valley towards the train station. From there, I got a train to Interlaken, which was like heartbreaking because that's kind of where we began this whole series. From Interlaken, I got on a train to Spies and this place is incredible. I'm glad I had about an hour and a half. I just went to a pub with a beautiful view of the lake and enjoyed my time there waiting for my train. By the time the second train arrived, I, oh God, this was so stressful. Let me just, I, I actually recorded a, a clip at the time. Bear in mind that I was kind of frustrated at this point. Ticket inspector looks at my ticket and he just starts shaking his head. He said, no, the train arrived and the front half went in the direction that you're going and the back half is going backwards. And I said, well, who the hell told me? The culture in Switzerland is like, just make it up or don't tell people like, oh, you're gonna climb that mountain and go over that mountain pass? Good luck. Should I tell him it's closed? No. What train am I getting on? Platform three, 45 minutes. Okay, thank you. Should I tell him to make sure he gets on the front of the train because the back, the back half of the train's going in another direction? Nah, he'll, he'll work it out on his own. He's a, he's a tourist, he's never been here before. I'm sure he knows it straight away by, by uh, the gift of God. Anyway, then we finally got on another train and it arrived to Candesteg, where I'd be staying for the next couple of days. And uh, what a beautiful town it was when I arrived, even in the rain. We made it to Candesteg. It's raining, but there is a rainbow. Winner, winner. Rainbow dinner. And yesterday I just spent the whole day resting and recouping and doing a little bit of work, just having a complete full day off. And I've changed hotel to another one because it was much cheaper. And we're here now at Candesteg. So before I take you up to this lake, let me just share with you a little bit of the town itself because it's absolutely gorgeous. Candace Stegg, she's a beaut. So this restaurant has a bunch of different desserts and I was like, oh, I don't really want something super sugary, super fat. And she said, oh, we've got lots of fresh strawberries here. I said, oh, she goes, strawberries with meringue. Remember, meringue is from this area. We were in Merengin town recently. We didn't try any, so I was like, yeah, let's have some strawberries with meringue. And look at this. 
so there's more cream and meringue than there are strawberries. I don't know, I, in my mind I was picturing like a basket of fresh strawberries and a little bit of meringue on the side. I'm not complaining at all. Oh, listen, listen to that one. Oh, two in one action. <laughs> Mm. There's no words for this. It's mine. You're not having any. You're not having any. <laughs> and yeah, that was Candace Steg yesterday. And this morning I've come up to the lake, which as you can see behind me now. So let me explain and show you how I got here, what there is to do here, and the rest of this day off, this rest day, this little stretch of your leg hike, just to keep me and my legs pumping. So enjoy the video, enjoy this beautiful part of the Swiss Alps, and uh, let's go. Wow, this is uh, <laughs> this is quite the view. And that valley that we can see going that way, that's where we're gonna start walking tomorrow. Towards the Matterhorn. And we're kind of approaching the halfway point in terms of distance. It's quite nice to get this vantage of tomorrow's hike. But that's not happening right now. Right now I'm taking you to this place. This should be, according to the sign, a three or four and a half hour hike around the lake, depending on how far and what route we want to take. So it's like the perfect day hike, it's the perfect rest day, but it's enough to keep your blood pumping. Um, it says we can go either way here. <laughs> okay, so we can go left, we can go right, but there's an Instagram if we go right. Let's go to the right, and then we'll film the intro, which you probably already saw. But let's get the most famous backdrop for the intro. So obviously this is stunning, but this path leads us around and up and down and around again. And I think we'll find much nicer views because once we get a little bit of elevation, we start looking down and we see these mountains more of a backdrop. I think that's what, we'll just take this view to the next level. Bad Switzerland. Bad. What's cool is there's a, a local guy fishing, which I didn't expect you were allowed to fish here, but that's cool that you can. Second thing is you can rent a little rowing boat and the reflection of the mountain on the water is just unbelievable. There's somebody out there paddling around. We might do that. Especially if we can, I don't know, make a friend. Because doing that alone would be so sad.
We'll soon go past that waterfall and up into that pasture. There's some huts up there. I think that's going to be the best view. But as I'm walking, I'm just like, look at the way the mountains reflect here. It's just amazing. Incredible, truly spectacular. Words don't do it justice, obviously. We've got to come here, come to Switzerland. <laughs> Obviously. Wow, it feels incredible. Fresh from the glaciers and the ice above. Oh, that's cold. Oh. I decided to come off piste a little bit, get more of a visceral experience and just clambered up this steep hill. Not too far. You can see a couple of dudes down there. Gives you a little bit better view, a bit higher up than the, the beautiful path itself. It was a great place to fly the drone. And this place, hoo -hoo, holy moly. Obviously, it speaks for itself. Obviously, I don't need to tell you how beautiful it is. If it wasn't for that snow-capped mountain here, we would have walked here a couple of days ago because where we were, we would have gone down into another town and then come up and over and around this lake down into Candas. But as you saw in the previous episode, it wasn't quite possible, unfortunately. Just a few two weeks too early before this ice up there at 2,000, 3,000 meters finally melts away which is a shame <laughs> we had to get the bus and train around here obviously but wow who cares not me not right now anyway Woo!
had a nice bottle of beer, a Swiss drop of ale. So this little hut serves cold beer. They have a few snacks, chocolate bar crisps, and some hand knitted socks, but no, no hot food. So don't come up here expecting a feed, bring your own. And then just sit here and enjoy the view, have a cold drink, have a beverage, and uh, make a decision on what you want to do. You can either continue hiking up and around, you can go up a little bit more it looks like, but only a short distance to even more epic view, but it's kind of hard to imagine it getting better than this. Rest your legs. It took about two and a half hours for me to get up here, but I had to stop a lot and film and fly the drone and take my time. You could probably rush up here in an hour, hour and a half. Quite steep at parts. Definitely a hike, definitely feels like a hike. Um, but it should be nice and fun on the way down. I haven't decided if I'm, if I'm gonna go up and around or if I'm gonna go down the way I came. All around, successful rest day hike. Okay, welcome to Blau Sea. This was formed 15,000 years ago during the glacial event and it caused a big sinkhole to form and then the groundwater filled it up and created this aqua blue color due to minerals and things occurring naturally and now it's a, a little spot nearby to come check out. I think it was, what was it, nine francs to get in but that includes a little boat trip. <laughs> it's not bad. Oh, look at the way the wind is coming across the water there. The wind and the sunlight together. Any fishermen or fishmongers or fish enthusiasts? <laughs> Are they trout or salmon? Because they look like trout or salmon. <laughs> I believe they're quite similar species. It really is crystal, crystal clear. Those fish look yummy. It's really, really pretty here, but it's busy. It's a picnic family place. It's small. I've walked around it now. And there's, there's lots of people taking pictures everywhere. Beautiful, obviously, obviously it's beautiful, but there's nothing to do here. There's a really expensive overpriced restaurant. There's the free boat trip. But I don't want to go on there with a bunch of kids because it'd be impossible to film. There is a bunch of people here and it's quite noisy. I think it's one of those Instagram spots. If you came here really early in the morning and it was just you, you could have a really nice time here for about 45 minutes. It's tiny. It's tiny. It's really, really small. I don't know why I'm so underwhelmed. I think it's because it looked amazing on, uh, on Instagram. 
typical Instagram. All right, so I came back to the hotel, had a hot shower, had a nap. Now I'm having a pizza back at my hotel and I hope you enjoyed that video. That beautiful, incredible lake. I think that was the best way to start your day. And in the next video, we get our big backpack, we get our hiking boots strapped back on and we continue in that direction towards Zamat. Lots of unknowns, lots of uh, big, scary, tall mountains in front of us. And we'll have to do lots of walking, lots of hiking, lots of problem solving. And I can't wait to get on the road again. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow morning in the next video when we keep going in that direction. <laughs> Listen, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to watch the next one, then just click here and it will take you straight to the next episode. And if you enjoyed the video, hit like, hit subscribe. Completely free to do and it helps me out.